Welcome everyone. I'm Carlos, digital artist. This video is about Tourbox, a console for digital artists and content creators. It will be focused on using Tourbox with the digital painting software Rebel. I will share my thoughts about the combination of Tourbox and Rebel. Finally, I will share a preset to use Tourbox with Rebel. Currently, there's not any shared preset for Rebel. It's easy to create presets, but surely, when you unbox the Tourbox, you want to start using it as soon as possible. I will start with the review. If you want to go straight to the preset explanation, jump to the chapter 4. Let me start saying this review isn't sponsored at all. I purchased a Tourbox Elite for myself, with the hope that console will enhance my workflow and rebel, or at least it allows me to paint digitally with more comfort. I already have two remote controllers, the Wacom Express Keys and the Zensel Labs Quick Keys. Despite the dials, both remote controllers aren't useful. They can't remove the use of keyboard because they are short in buttons. Both controllers may have its uses, but they never can replace a keyboard. As digital artists, we have a pen monitor in front of us where we paint. We need that space where the keyboard is usually located. You can place the keyboard in the side, top or bottom, in the case you have enough space in your working area. But even by doing that, it's very uncomfortable. I decided to buy a tour box and try if this time I can finally hide my keyboard. I ordered the Elite model, but in my opinion, any other model will serve. The tour box has a lot of buttons with different shapes, it's very easy to know which button are you pressing without having to watch the console. You can also use any combination of two buttons, or use double click instead of single click. You have literally hundreds of shortcut options. The Elite model has three dials. In my opinion, the tour box is useful even if only use these three dials. There's a central dial used to tweak brush settings. Combined with other buttons, you can use it to tweak different brush settings like size, opacity, and wetness. You have a scroll wheel, it feels natural to use it to zoom you canvas. Finally you have a third dial. I saw many Tourbox reviews saying that they don't use this third dial, even by doing digital art. I thought it may be a big mistake not to using it, so I set it to change the brush tip angle. Everything sounds amazing. But this is just a promise. To make sure it's useful, you need to use it. First, I searched for a Rebel preset. There's not any one available on internet. So I started creating it myself. To use the console, you need to download and run the Tourbox console software, available on the official site. There's versions for Windows and Mac. This software has some help and tutorials built in, but I'd go straight to the settings without reading them at all. The entire configuration process is a bit different from the usual Mac or Windows software. But it's easy enough to use and understand without the need of tutorials. In around one hour I created the first version of Rebel preset. I even created a macro, because the driver allows it. Macro are a set of sequential actions, they are useful for multi-actions and repetitive tasks. With my keyboard hidden I started creating this artwork. It's an American Kestrel. My intention was to start with dry media. It's more easy than oil or watercolor. You just need to switch between paint, blend, and erase. So, few buttons to press, to get used to the console. It was very successful. I got used to it very fast. I even added some layer work and added watercolor. I did a second artwork, this time with oil. It's more complex than dry media, because you need to use more Rebel features, like oiliness, layers, layer blending modes, even some watercolor. This time was a little harder. I had to check sometimes which button has the right shortcut. It's logical you have these kind of disconnection with first uses. But even at these first stages, I had to watch the shortcuts fewer times than with a keyboard. 
I did a final test. This time by creating a watercolor artwork. Watercolor and rebel it's the most shortcut intensive technique. Despite that, I already was confident with layer work, and I didn't have any trouble with wet shortcuts. In fact, this was the smoothest experience I ever had painting with watercolor and rebel. In the watercolor I didn't have to watch which button does that. This means the Tourbox controller has a very fast learning curve. I had to stop and reconfigure the preset sometimes, but I guess this is typical in these situations. So, in conclusion, this was a very good experience. I'm very satisfied and I'm sure we'll use Tourbox from now on. The Tourbox control is really the definitive controller for digital art. It feels natural, is fast, very capable, and you can configure to your taste and usage. But it also has some problems. For example, the presets aren't universal. I mean, there's no option to switch automatically between the control key in Windows and the command key in Mac. So, a Windows preset may need to be tweaked by the Mac user. The presets are tied to your keyboard language. I always use the Spanish keyboard, but I had to switch to English keyboard because the Rebel default brush size shortcuts can be only used with English keyboards. When I configured it and switched back to Spanish, I noticed it didn't work because the keys distribution are different in English. So, even by downloading a preset, you may need to tweak it. For example, there's a Photoshop built-in preset that works wonderful. But the brush size dial didn't work for me until I tweaked it. Finally, this is not a problem, but I guess it may be better implemented. There's not a built-in preset management for download and upload. You have to go to the official site to get more presets. It will be good to get these presets within the controller app. For digital art, yes, I fully recommend it, especially for Rebel. The digital artists didn't always have enough desktop space for so many accessories and hardware. Even if you have enough space, it's more convenient to use a single hand controller like Tourbox instead of a full sized keyboard. There's alternatives, of course. But this one it's the more versatile and easy to use. At least within all similar hardware I tested. I only don't recommend it if you are used to your keyboard and you don't want to change your workflow. For novices in digital art, maybe it's better you don't buy it. It's better you first get used to your tablet and the keyboard. Lastly, I don't recommend it if you find it too expensive. For digital art, it's always more recommended you spend your money on better drawing tablets or screens. But, if you already have everything you need, Tourbox is the best addition to your gear. Currently, there's three Tourbox versions. The Lite, the Neo, and the Elite. The Neo and the Elite have the same buttons and dials. The major difference is the addition of haptic feedback and Bluetooth on the Elite model. Is worth the Elite model? To be honest, you will do the same in both models. Having Bluetooth is nice. The haptic feedback is nice to have, but not as important as Bluetooth. The light model has less buttons and only two dial instead of three. This may be a problem because you don't have so much buttons, but it can be tweaked by using button combinations. The missing dial is less noticeable because you can set the main dial to be used with any other button combination. But the lack of buttons may also be an advantage. Less buttons means less options to think about it. So your workflow may be more comfortable and faster. If you want a tour box but you are unsure, I recommend you the Neo version. The Elite is good and better, but only if have the money to spend. I purchased the Elite because it was on discount, otherwise I would purchase the Neo. The light versions is also a good alternative especially if you are unsure about the tour box. At the moment of this video creation, there's a fourth new tour box controller coming in the next weeks. It's called the Elite Plus version.
As far as I know, it's the Elite version with the added compatibility to use it on iPad. The price difference is very small. So, it may be a good idea to put that version, especially if you have both iPad and desktop computer. Let's go with the Rebel preset. You need to download it from the link provided in the description of the video. I tried to upload it in the official Turbox site, but don't seem to have an automated way to upload it. I will contact the team, so maybe this preset will be included on the official preset download page when you watch this video. To install, open the Turbox software. Click the Import Presets button. Select your downloaded file, and the preset will be installed. Open Rebel. Go to Turbox software. Click over non-linked text. Select Rebel from the list. Make sure the Auto Switch button is on. This way, every time you use Rebel it will also use the preset. This preset is made for Mac users. Many shortcuts will not work because in Mac the command key is used instead of the control key. You may have to click over the button description to change the shortcut. This preset is made using the English keyboard layout. If you use another keyboard layout, many shortcuts will not work. Any not working shortcut will be marked in red, and you will need to change it by clicking on the button description. Even by tweaking the settings, some shortcuts are not available in non-English keyboards. For example, in Spanish keyboards there's not a K for the default Rebel shortcut to change brush size. In this case, you will need to change first the shortcut in Rebel. Then, change to use the same shortcut in Turbox software. Some actions in Rebel don't have a default shortcut attached to it. For example, the brush tip rotation feature. In order to work correctly, you will need to open keyboard settings in Rebel and add the same shortcuts. By default, there's a new little HUD in the screen. It shows the functions attached to the four buttons which resembles a gaming digital pad. I set these buttons for tool switch. All major Rebel tools have a button assigned here. It only shows four tools. If you press one of the modifier keys, it will show four new tools. There's also a helper panel to show all button functions, but it's hidden by default. To show it, move the cursor to the right. Okay, now to the preset. As I mentioned before, the digital pad is used to change between Rebel tools. This is painting, blending and erase. Also the Rebel painting modes, like paint and mix, and other tools like select, transform or liquify. The central dial is used to change brush settings. It changes the brush size. With modifiers, it changes the opacity or the wetness and oiliness. All the dials also have a click functionality. If you click the central dial, it will reset all brush settings to their default. The scroll wheel is just that, a scroll wheel which will zoom in or out. If you press it, it will fit the canvas to the screen. The bottom left dial changes the brush tip angle. The two bottom right buttons are used as option and space keys respectively. The top button is tied to command key. The left button use shift key. Now one of the most important and forgotten feature on any digital painting software. This button combination saves your progress. Don't forget to use it very often. The small left button is for undo. The modifier with this button is for redo. The small button next to the central dial opens a new on-screen panel with layer options. I tried to add a button to pigments and layer blending mode change but I was unable to do it. Now for the watercolor. The right small button dries the layer. When you paint with watercolor, this is the feature that needs more fast reaction, for this reason I attached it to a single click button. By pressing the two little buttons with the modifier button, you will wet the entire layer or only visible area. 
If you press the bottom left dial, it will pause the fusion and also show the water amount of the layer. Click it again to unpause and hide the water. I also added buttons combinations to flip the canvas and show in grayscale. And surely I added more shortcuts. But, to be honest, all the showcased buttons are more than enough. If you want, you can change any setting or add your own functions and shortcuts. But this is only a showcase of the preset, not a thoughtful tutorial about Turbox. I hope this preset and my opinion is useful to you, especially if you recently purchased a Turbox or you are considering buying one. Take care and see you in the next video.